All right, and welcome back to another episode of School Days, where we talk to creators behind the scenes about the creative process, and we also learn a few things from them in a tutorial. So guess what? We are here today with my baby brother. I know, I, I'm so excited about this episode because of course he's family. So, I mean, bro, what's up? Rob, how are you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I am good. I know you are tuning in and calling in from Los Angeles, sunny LA, right? Yes, yes. Like I'm, the weather finally is back. Um, we get to go to the, the, the beach now again, which is a blessing. So I'm a beach bum, so that's my hangout. You could just absolutely there anytime. <laughs> I mean, okay, so here's the thing. Let's be real. Let's get straight to the point. Cause I've seen you the videos and you've been out and about um as we have as well, uh, with everything going on. I mean, when we thought the world could not turn any more upside down, these last three weeks have been a kicker, right? And you know, I saw some of your videos. You went to uh protests recently, but it was different because I saw some I saw some horses. Tell us about that. <laughs> I was able to go down to Compton a couple of days ago to a protest. It was a peace walk, um, and it was with the Compton Cowboys. And it was so beautiful just to get to see the community come together. Um, you got to see little boys on ponies and, you know, people, oh. horse riding people from all walks of life. They came down, they joined in this peace walk, and it was beautiful. Like, we just walked through the neighborhood. We walked through... Uh, just Compton, you know, just, just seeing that just gave me chills. And just to see the solidarity was just, it was just beautiful. Bro, yeah. I, you know, with that said, we have time on our hands, right? We're doing things, we're able to participate in things that we normally don't always participate. Uh, I started this episode, or excuse me, this series, School Days, because we were all, everyone was at home, you know, nine, 10 weeks ago, and we've just started lockdown. And everyone was like, you know, we need things to do. We want to invest into virtual learning. And now we've kind of created this community. And so we're really glad that you can come on board and talk to us about how to break into the new Hollywood. So, I mean, you, I, here's the thing, guys, those are just watching in. Um, my brother and I, you know, we've, we've had one of them relationships. Like, it's never been difficult. It's, you know, <laughs> yeah. you moved yeah. to LA, but what, like, what happened when you first moved to LA? Oh my gosh, uh, uh, let me tell you, like, that was never part of the plan. Like I started off, I was so determined just to be a football player. It was to just get a scholarship basically. And uh, I was, I did a talent show in high school and I had like so much fun with it. And uh, it was in the back of my head, like, you know, you know this could be fun, like performing. But um, I was just locked on football and I went to UNLV to, to walk on and to, to do that. And that was not what God had planned for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I get there, uh, the coaching staff changes that I've been talking to out of high school. Um, and I'm like, okay, like that's just not going to work out. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I ended up uh, bumping into a professor actually on my way to the student union. And uh, I don't know, we just started talking. It was just like a little small talk on my way to Panic yeah. Square. He was just like, yeah, uh, his name was Nate Bynum, who's my mentor now. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I teach uh, acting for the camera class. And I'm like, really? You guys have this program here? Like, that's actually pretty cool. And I did a drop-in with this class, and I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Like, this is really cool. And sold. I, and I was sold, yeah, yeah. And, and I had been talking to you because we were talking about the technical theater. And, uh, and it would get right. me closer to, uh, to being in that arena. And... Uh, Little did I know uh, this was going to be my major was acting for the camera. And yeah. then you moved to L.A., and right? I just moved to L.A. This is, that's what set it all off. And it's, uh, it has been a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. But you, okay, like, y'all, real talk. You moved to L.A., but then, like, you moved back home, right? So, you guys, don't trust. Like, me and my brother, we have that kind of relationship. Like, we just call it as it is. So he moved back home. And then like, tell us what happened with that. Like, why oh. did you move back home? Oh my gosh, like, no, no moolah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <No> moolah. <laughs> Cha -ching. Cha -ching. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, LA requires money. You know what I mean? And, and I remember yeah. like professors, they say, hey, if you can move to LA with at least $10,000 in your account, do that. And my butt, like I go out there, I think I might have had, I had enough for the first month of rent, 
and like a deposit and then that was that and uh yeah so the whole time like i whenever i moved out there i was just skating by skating by skating by and then my truck breaks down i'm like oh great and then i'm just like i'm busting it around la there's no uber at the time i'm like Mm -mm. oh my god this this can't be real life you know moving on from that you know let's talk about like like some receipts you know i think it takes a certain kind of determination to go to markets where you know there's so much competition you know that is quite cutthroat and you went and you did that and you've been picking up roles um you have a reoccurring role at least this last season on um queen of the south and right now they have you lined up for season five which is really exciting and you know and you were on that film naked with one of the wayans brothers that was really fun to see on that and and some also (laughs) yeah it's like incredible and some incredible shows like walking dead and you, that, that actually has gotten you a bit of notoriety with some of your fans, right? It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, like that world, it's like, uh, it's, a, it's a juggernaut. Like, like it put me on, on their radar, you know, for quite some mm-hmm. time. And they had other roles they had me taped for and I would yeah. get close and it was just this whole kind of thing like that. And then finally, it fell my way. Like I, there was a role that I think they had in mind, like they're thinking about me the whole time. And yeah. it was like, one of the wolves uh, in season six you know and it was it was they're kind of these mysterious characters because they they're kind of like scavengers and they're just kind of preying on like the on the group in the pack and um it was a great role and i i went down there and uh shot for a week and i got, got to meet you know uh you know morgan james and you know seth yeah. and all those guys and it was like oh my god is this real like <laughs> <laughs> yes and it was uh it was just a total blessing you know and just uh and to see them work on set was just like a master class in itself yeah. like, like, wow you know so, so and uh so and from that i was able to yeah do conventions and you know that type of thing so it, it just opened up so many doors but do you also feel that sometimes that you also can get typecast you know in terms of things that you might get sent for like saying oh we want you to audition for this role um do you ever feel like you get typecast Oh yeah, all the time, all the time, and it's it's um, it's a constant battle because uh, you know you know as an artist what you can do and what you can offer, and um, and your your agents like they know what you can do, they know you're super talented, you know, but they know what casting sees you as, and they they know like you have a higher percent of a chance percentage, mm-hmm. you know, of booking like they, you know I see me as a cop, I see me as a detective, and and that kind of you know that realm so it's it's always a struggle and it's you got to fight it you know you have to yeah you know you just <laughs> like whatever role that just breaks the mold you have to go go after that because you know I, I feel you you just have to kind of create this whole bubble you know this whole mm. this creative bubble that uh you know you know hey i can always do this you know and you have to you have to tell casting like hey you know this is what i can do constantly yeah. Or you write your own screenplays and you produce them like you've just recently done. Um, I know you're going to talk a little bit about it in your tutorial that you have coming up, but uh, for those that are wondering, you know, is, is, you know, has he done any other work uh, outside of um, acting and roles? So he's went and actually wrote a whole screenplay, but this wasn't your only screenplay. Like you've written other um, scripts as well, but this is the one that actually, actually came together in terms of a production team. So, I mean, in terms of that, like, do you feel like with creating your own work, do you feel like if you're an aspiring filmmaker and actor, do you feel like those two worlds can really overlap really well? Oh, I really think so. Uh, Especially in this day and age, um, there's so many different opportunities, like as far as streaming, um, people are just looking for original ideas right now. Um, and, And whenever I had the opportunity uh, to do this project called Something to Fight For. Um, what really inspired me was seeing a lot of the uh, the homeless population in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I really wanted to dive into that. And I really wanted to tell a story that offered hope uh, in a way. And um, and everything just fell into place so perfectly because wow. I, uh, I enrolled into this gym, this Muay Thai gym, and uh, just, I fell in love with it. I loved the training. I loved what it was doing to my body. I was just like, this is awesome, like, you know, and I, and, and, and what's so interesting is this gym, 
without even trying, like there were other actors that work out at this gym and there's guys who are involved in music and they're into producing. And I'm like, wow, you do this, you do that. I was like, oh my gosh. And then we're getting to talk and I'm like, yeah, I have this idea for the story, you know, and thing and everything just kind of just wow. like flushed together. So it was just perfect timing, you know. And um, Ways I to leverage like, like yeah. you know, things that are just going on in your life, like memberships, the fact that you were able to source this incredible talent and team, you know, from exactly. people that went to your gym. That's pretty incredible. You know, exactly. with that said, I would love to transition this into you talking about, you know, how to break into the new Hollywood. I didn't even really realize that was a term, but then I thought, I'm like, oh yeah, I know what the new Hollywood is. But you know, I want to hear about it, like what it really is from someone who's actually been there, who's gone through the process, and who's currently, you know, pursuing his dream while navigating these waters of the new Hollywood. So I'm just gonna go ahead and allow you to take it from there. Feel free to share your screen. So yeah, here we are breaking into Hollywood, the new Hollywood at that, because it's a new world out there and um, there's no rules. But before we get into the history of Hollywood, let me give you just a little bit more about me. Um, well, the Brandon Shed, that is me, that is I. <laughs> uh, I am actually a Los Angeles Film Award winner uh, for my film, Something to Fight For. And I'm so blessed to say that because uh, it just came together so well. Like we won the Inspirational Film Award and you know that meant so much to me because that was the whole goal behind the whole film is to inspire people and to just to create a narrative you know, for the less fortunate out there and to just to offer some hope. You know, That was the whole goal behind it. And uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to to work on films such as Triple Nine and and Walking Dead and Confirmation and Make It on Netflix and and working with some of these guys has just been a total blessing because I I grew up watching these guys like Yolanda could tell you I used to get home and I couldn't wait to watch the Wayne's Brothers you know so it's just like whenever you're on set and you're like you're working with these guys it's like come on like just you're like constantly pinching yourself so it's just amazing and. Um, Queen of the South, I can't wait to get back to that, you know, um, crossing my fingers, you know, we get to start soon, you know, because I love New Orleans. I want some beignets. I want some uh, crab legs. <laughs> yeah, like what more could you ask for? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me give you a little bit of uh, history behind Hollywood. Uh, some people know this, but a lot don't. Um, actually, in the 1900s, Thomas Edison, he held the patent. Uh, for a lot of the motion pictures. And a lot of filmmakers, um, they were trying to copy this and they were getting sued. So a lot of them, they fled to Los Angeles to avoid this. So that's why you see a lot of independent films back in the, the early 1900s, you know, because they, they had this and it was just so much freedom and, and it was really an exciting time, you know, to be a filmmaker around this time. So um, I don't know, there's a part of me that wishes I was around during that time just to see that whole like that excitement, this whole new world just kind of like come into to light. So it's really cool stuff, really, really cool. So uh, here's my trailer for the film, Something to Fight For. Um, let's take a look. We're submitting this to several film uh, festivals right now. Um, well, here you go, Something to Fight For. I told you, I'll do whatever it takes. This is all I got. Nobody's ever given me anything. Don't fuck it up. Stop no, resisting. I told you, man. You know we've been trying. What do you mean resisting? Get over me, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know we've been trying. You know we've been trying. Let it go. You know we've been trying. I don't want a reality. I want a dream. I want what everybody says I can't have. Okay. What's all this? Uh, don't worry about that. I got this figured out. Well, no, you don't, Mom. You're not even working right now. What are you going to tell me about all this? I've been kind of sick in case you have to know. I know, Mom. How much we got to give these people? He's raw. He's got something. You want to train him? Just a workout.
have a couple of steps I feel that are really, really important uh, as far as breaking into the business. You know, just just finding your your way in. You know, having your own lane. And number one for me is to be a filmmaker. You know, and, and ask yourself: um, Are you a writer? Are you an actor? Are you a producer? Um, and if you're a writer, I would say this, uh, I hear this constantly from a lot of people who are really talented in writing as they read a lot, you know, and they write something every day. There's, that's just a rule of thumb. Um, you know, if it's just like a little note or a little something that you just put on your phone from like a conversation, you're, you're just at a restaurant or something, you hear something funny, put it down, like put it, you know, some of like the best, <laughs> the best dialogue is just stolen from just living life, you know, so. I would say do that if you're a writer. And, and if you're an actor, um, I would say constantly, constantly hone your craft. Um, be a student, you know, be in class, do workshops, you know, and it's, and I'm reminding myself this as well, because it's, you, you have to work it, you know, if you want to kind of catapult yourself, like in, you know, other arenas, you know, different characters, you know, you have to constantly work on accents and you have to, you have to just be a student of it. So very, very important to stay in class. Um, and if you want to go the producing route, um, I would just say chase interesting stories that you would love to see on the big screen, you know, like talk to people, you know, about script ideas, you know, see what they have, you know, that they, they want to get out there and try to connect those people, you know, because you never know, like things have a way of falling into place and, um, hey, you know, anything's possible. Just always be on the search for interesting stories that you love. And this is one thing that um, I, I wish I knew when I first moved to Los Angeles, and it was to have a winning team behind you, like a team uh, that you feel can challenge you and to like always push your work to the next level. Um, and you see this a lot of times in Hollywood, different directors and actors, they work uh, with each other for years and years, and they're making these incredible films. And it's because they gel so well and they're just, they trust each other and they just love working with each other. So find this, like, and if, 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 if you're coming out of college, stick with those people, you know, because you're going to, you're going to know these people for the rest of your life and you're going to work with them, you know, and it's a beautiful thing whenever you can do that and you can build a career that can last a lifetime. And it's like, like, shoot, you know, I've been working with this guy, like coming out of freshman year, you know, and you just have that. So it, it's a beautiful thing. So cherish that avoid type casting we talked about this earlier you know um i feel like it's it's important for actors to always challenge their their agent and their manager to send them roles that are just different from the norm you know uh a, a great example was i was sent a role uh that it was uh it was for a gay character it was actually it was a drag you know and it was for this hbo show i forgot the name of it um but anyway it, uh, I wasn't going to do it, you know, because I, I got the email and I was just like, oh, he was like, yeah, I don't want to do this, you know, but then like I really sat and thought about it and uh, I said, you know, this could be really fun, actually. I was like, you know, I was like, you know, what the heck, you know, I was like, let's just have some fun, you know, so uh, I went to the store, got a whole outfit, I got some like lipstick, I got this whole thing, I got like some jewelry, I got the whole thing, you know, and I put that thing on tape, I sent it off and I was just like, Hey, whatever, you know, and I ended up getting a call back for it, you know, like <laughs> it was just, I don't know. I just had like a lot of fun with it and I was just so relaxed and, you know, I guess maybe they see me as a drag queen now. So I don't know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing is just like have fun, you know, but, but always challenge your agent and managers to, to get you in the room for stuff that you know you are capable of doing, you know, and, uh, and create opportunities for your, for yourself, you know, write that screenplay. Um, because some of the best stuff that's out right now was written by actors that they wanted to see themselves as something else. And that's some of the stuff that is winning at Sundance and it's winning at Cannes and it's winning at these, these amazing festivals, you know, because people are, are pushing their artistry like so much further and they're, they're, they're asking these questions, you know, that um, people just want to see answered in, in film. So do it. And uh, hey, patience is a virtue. You know, I mean, it is not a marathon uh, by any means. This is going to take several years. And, and yo, you know, she knows, you know, I, I love how you're, you're building your career right now uh, with this, because this was not something that just happened overnight, you know, because, uh, 
you know, you know, you could tell me like, look at, look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> Still building to season oh. one is almost done. One more season. No, not one more season, but yeah, just a few more weeks. And I feel like we accomplished a lot for in 12 episodes. So yeah, yeah, it's work. It is work. It's work. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. People don't hit gold like right on the first, the first knock. So <laughs> no, no, some do. It's interesting. Like some people sometimes, and that's where you, we always have to be really careful of watching people and comparing ourselves to people. We have to realize that our journey is not someone else's journey and their journey is not ours. So just because someone hit it much faster than we might have, or, you know, accomplished that with the same resources, doesn't mean that that was our journey. So we have to be comfortable and confident and, you know, in our own process and in our own journey. So when you say patience is a virtue, absolutely, it absolutely is. And you have to, for any creative industry, you have to have a whole heck of a lot of it. And uh, yeah, these are a couple links. Um, if you want to stay in touch with me, I'm on Instagram a lot. Uh, you can always okay. message me on there. Uh, Twitter, I'm trying to get a little bit better with Twitter, but you can absolutely write me something on there and I will respond. That's my Facebook. Uh, I'm open to doing one-on-ones. You know, uh, if you have any advice that you'd like to ask me, like where, how, how should I get started? Um, I'm offering one-on-ones. Um, you know, I, I usually charge, uh, you know, $30 for a half an hour. I'm, I'm, but hey, you know what? Just talk to me. We can work something out. You know, I'm open to that. So, bro, I am telling you, you're always coming through with the deets. I, I love that you came up with this idea of trying to make Hollywood accessible, and and not that it's your grand idea. Like the new Hollywood is here and it's happening, and people can tap into it. But I love that you're able to make that very accessible. You know, for everyone. I mean, for you know, to ask you this is. For someone who, let's say, you know, they might live, they might not live, you know, in uh, the States at all, but they're interested in you know, pursuing, you know, maybe having their screenplay picked up or trying to maybe um, pitch a streaming platform. Do you have any advice for those that are looking at that? Yeah, a absolutely. Um, I would say as, as far as pitching your idea to like a Netflix or an Amazon, um, I would really say uh, sir, get on IMDb Pro and you will get, get an account. Um, it's usually about $19 a month, but what it does is it gives you access to all of these contacts, um, everyone from Warner Brothers, Amazon, uh, um, uh, HBO, and you you get all of these executives emails, you know, and you could do a personal email for every exact, you know, every, you know, person on there and you can give them a pitch. It could just be something. And a lot of people I know they're getting responses and they're, they're getting meetings uh, from this, you know, mm -hmm. so I would say that's a great start. And, and another thing too, this kind of goes back to the gym and just meeting people organically is to yeah. get out, actually. just to get out of your comfort zone, you know, Get that membership at Equinox, you know, even though it's expensive, but it's worth it. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, get get out, you know, go to bars. I mean, I'm not a bar person, you know, but you will be surprised at how many prof young professionals go to just bars and you will just meet people organically, you know, and yeah. they're, they're just, they have a couple beers in them. They're just completely themselves. They're not thinking about the business, you know, don't even talk about the business whenever you go out, just talk about anything that's just fun mm -hmm. and build real relationships. And before you know it, you know, you have all these people on your phone and so-and-so is an agent, so-and-so's a writer, so-and-so's in development. You know, I've met several people in development, you know, and, yeah. and it's just, things just happen organically. So um, don't chase it too much, um, but put yourself in that environment. You know, and that's um, that's gonna get you get you there that much. And, and another thing too, um, the the thing of the past was people used to think like I have to be in LA, I have to be in LA. Now it's not so much the case. It, it is important mm -hmm. to build those relationships and to be there. But now, like if if you're if you're having access, you know, with all these emails and things, you know, you can kind of go back and forth. You know, it's not as 
you know, as important. But yeah. um, I would say the end game would be to to really have boots on the ground and to meet these people, you know. And what are other cities maybe that you've even considered um, maybe oh. being based in? New York has a, a ton of film uh, going on. Atlanta, I've done a lot of stuff in Atlanta. Um, yeah. Even Nashville is starting to kind of become. Wow, I didn't know that. Hot spots. Yeah, and nice. uh, yeah, New Mexico as well too. There's a lot of. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Stranger Things is about to be filmed in New Mexico. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. So it just shows you, like, it's you don't have to be physically always in LA, but it's, it's played to your favor to be able to network there and build your career there. But um, yeah, it's maybe it's not always for everyone. That leads me back to what you were saying earlier about offering um, mentoring and advice, kind of like one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, people always ask me, like, how can we support the creators on this program? Guys, buy their products, you know, share their content, get in touch with them, support them, buy them coffees, buy their mentoring sessions, buy their courses. Like that is one of the best ways to support creators and allows them to continue to create content or allows them, supports them in the pursuit, you know, of, of you know, in their pursuit of their passions, so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, my brother, of course, I didn't have him on here just because he's my little brother. Well, partly, but, you know, most of the part is because one, he's so super talented. And you know, for those that are looking to break into Hollywood or just have questions about LA, Hollywood, anything, he's definitely a great resource. So we'll be putting PayPal details below. Feel free, you know, to um, set up a time with him and that can be all facilitated through CMs, super accessible. Like he said, he is always on Instagram. In fact, when I need to reach him through WhatsApp or the family needs to reach him through WhatsApp, they tell me to go text him on Instagram because they don't use Instagram. So I will be here texting him saying, hey, bro, so trust, you'll get a hold of him. So we hope you're going to join us next week for episode 11. We're going to have Lola Akimade Ekostrom. And she's going to be talking to us about how to connect with strangers and improve your portrait photography. That's going to be a really great session. So hopefully you'll join us for that. So again, LeBrandon, we just want to say goodbye and let everyone know that we are so happy that you joined us on this particular episode of School Days, where we talk to creators and get their behind the scenes creative process and also learn a thing or two in a tutorial. So we will hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> That's how you start off a broadcast with your little brother, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling on you. I'm, I'm telling mommy. <laughs> <laughs>